promised you three streams this week, and you're going to get three streams this week. And then, of course, the live watch along on Friday morning. But I'm really determined to get these live streams back up and running, even if they are ridiculously late in the day. Hey, Barbie, I'm back too. So it's so great to see everybody there. Scott, your story about Arclight is very sad. If you, for those of you who don't know, as he just wrote, Scott met his husband there. who They're both wonderful people. Um, but don't worry, Scott, I have some pretty good news for you. Hey, Zigdan, thanks for joining. So the way that this works, <clears throat> for those of you who are, are not familiar with the streams, is that I will do the first three stories of the day, and then at the end, you can ask me anything you'd like for the final 10 minutes of the stream. I'm glad everybody's enjoying the sunset. Uh, I had to wait a little bit for the sun to go down because it was like I was under a frickin' magnifying glass for a while there. <laughs> I'm like, my kingdom for a cloud. All right, so anyway, yes, I love talking to you guys and it's very important to me to make sure that these streams happen. You know, they're, they're, they're a part of our week. Oh yeah, and Lloyd will do shout outs at the very, very end. At the very end, I do shout outs. I ask people what they're eating. I ask people what they're watching. I ask people what they're doing. We have a good time. Hey, Mando's Ace, is that a llama? That's fantastic. I missed you too, Nick. All right, everybody, let's get started. All right, so first story of the day. Boop. Oh, look, it's moved from yesterday when I didn't want to cover up poor Zachary Levi's face. All right, so last night, people were devastated, devastated when they heard that Arclight Cinemas and Pacific Theaters would not be reopening. Trended number one, largely because a lot of artistic folk on the Twitters were particularly upset. Um, all right, so let me, let's talk about a few things. So first off, the reason that it's closing or not reopening is that they owe too much back rent. So like many stores and many places, uh, you know, people just haven't been paying their rent. They're like, ah, I don't have any money to pay you with. So basically, instead of allowing Arclight to slowly pay it back, their landlords were like, yo, you're not opening these doors until you pay us what you owe us. And Arclight's, like, Arclight's parent company was like, I can't do that. So basically, they decided to tell on their landlords and go and tell on them in the press. So they were like, look, everybody, I'd love to reopen these movie theaters, but our crummy landlords won't let us. So... What's the play here? Now, some people were like, oh, maybe somebody else will come in and purchase this, this theater. You know, the Cinerama Dome is famous. So they're like, maybe someone else will come in and buy it. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that any exhibitors can afford to make that purchase. Maybe for the Cinerama Dome, but it would be expensive. I don't know if they would, if they would do that, um, especially because they're having so many of their own problems right now. Now, some of you said, well, what about Netflix? but that means that only Netflix movies could play there. And I can tell you that Netflix recently bought the Paris Theater in New York City, and it's not going so great. Uh, I mean, they reopened, but like nobody goes there because they're like, why should we pay to see a movie that we can watch at home on the screen? The only way that theater works is if they're playing the Netflix movies a month before they hit the streaming service. Uh, but they're not willing to do that on some of the titles. Like if Army of, the, Army of the Dead opens a week early and you could see it there, that would be kind of cool. Although the p pandemic might be a bit of an issue there. But I mean, that's how it would have to work. You, and I don't know if Netflix is comfortable doing that except for a few titles where they want to please the filmmaker. I mean, for the most part, Netflix doesn't care where you watch their movie. They just want you to stay subscribed to their streaming service. And they want their movies to qualify for awards runs. So that's the other issue. So I don't think I would want Netflix to purchase it with all due respect. They also already recently did this, Scott pointed out, the Egyptian theater. So they have their big historic landmark in Los Angeles. Um, now what I think is going to happen and what I think is the whole purpose for this story is that this company would like someone, an, an, an investor or maybe a good Samaritan to come along and do a one-time investment to cover, the, to cover the back rent. I think they're like, hey, look, a lot of Hollywood people love our theater, as everyone tweeted. Uh, and I think that they're like, maybe one of you will pony up the cash for us to be able to reopen our doors. I think that's honestly why they did it. So, as Mika just, Micah just said, what about Nolan? Yeah, what about Nolan? I mean, it would be like no money at all for like even all the studios to chip in together to get these people to reopen. Hey, Ellie Ortiz, but I don't think that the studios would do it because they're not in the business of doing it, something like that. I think it would have to be... And that's the other thing. It would have to be a pure gift of joy because 
this is not a charitable donation. So you couldn't even write it off. I guess you could look at it as a, an expense for your image. Like if Christopher Nolan paid to reopen the arc light, man, everybody would forgive him for forcing everybody to watch Tenet in theaters <laughs> and taking so long to release it on, on digital. I think that that would be really goodwill. So I think that some director or producer or movie star who has just an abundance of money, and there's a lot of them, could pay that money and it would just be fantastic goodwill. So that's what I think they should do. So, you know, it just happened yesterday. Hopefully someone will step up. If not, the theaters will go out, the theater will go out of business. But I hope that somebody does. I hope someone does. I think they owed like on this location, they owed like $200,000 in back rent or something like that. That's not too bad. I mean, we'll see. Josh Loves Movies says there's already artists creating GoFundMe pages. I don't know if they can raise enough. I mean, maybe they could. I don't know. I mean, that's, I mean, I guess you should. I mean, you would benefit from it reopening, right? Why not give 30 to 40? LeBron James would be great dancing dog 60. LeBron James has so much money and it would make him like, everybody would be like, ah, oh, LeBron, you I mean, everybody already loves LeBron, but I think it would help with his Hollywood street cred. That's a good idea. LeBron's publicist should recommend that to him. So I think it's, it's a really great idea to do. That's what I think someone should do. Now I will say about the arc light, the last time I went there, and this is going to be blasphemous, I thought it lost a little of its luster. I'm sorry, Scott. You know, I felt like, I mean, the great thing about it is they serve butter, uh, popcorn with real butter on it. So that's pretty great. Although it really can stain your clothes too. So be careful. I learned that the hard way. Uh, I dropped a popcorn on myself and that was the end of my shirt. But I was a little annoyed. I mean, last time I went, oh, so see, even Scott, unfortunately, agrees. I felt they'd let it get a little tattered around the edges. Like the last two, two times I went, I was like, is, this is the arc light of legend? I mean, I felt that it was a little dirty. Um, and I also, the problem is that they have seats that are covered with felt. And that is like, it's like, uh, you know, fabric seats in a car. They're incredibly difficult to maintain. So when people put gum on the seat, and people do, unfortunately, or they spill something on it, the seat gets a little bit messed up. So last time I went, the last thing I saw there was actually the Shazam press screening. Uh, it was, and I, I was pretty good. Leather seats are pretty good too, Evan, but I have to tell you, when I used to do the audience reactions on 42nd Street, we became friendly with the managers of the theaters at that time. Hey, the last millennial. And so, that's, a good, that's a great name. And somebody uh, told us, one of the managers, that people like to come in with a knife and just slit the chairs just for fun. And so the chair had to be reupholstered. So it's really difficult to maintain chairs. And if you go to the 84th Street 6th Theater, the AMC, what they do is they put like, like hats on the seats. And I really think that's a problem in New York City. So instead of reupholstering the chair, they'll just put like, a slip cover on the chair of like another layer of leather. So you're like, what is this? So, and then it has, creates a lot of crevices and you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. So maintaining movie theaters is, is difficult. Uh, so I, I still feel like um, premium theaters is the future and that's what they're gonna have to do. So we'll see what happens, but that's what's going on with the Arclight. But the Arclight, you know, it's pretty good. I prefer actually the Grove movie theater. When I go to Los Angeles, my two favorite theaters are the Grove. Uh, and then I also really like Century City's AMC. Although that's a very small theater. Like the, the AMC at Century City has very small hallways, you know, for where, where you are outside the theaters. What do you guys, does anyone have a favorite LA theater? CMX closed in Mexico, Cesar Coronado? CMX closed its theater here in New York and I'm very upset about it. I loved the CMX in New York City. Oh, that means they're definitely not coming back. God damn it. Oh Lloyd, the downtown Disney Springs AMC is very nice. I like IPIC too, Scott. I like the IPIC down here, it's very nice. Although they have a mouse problem. God damn it. Cinemark seems to be getting a lot of good bone. Alamo Draft House, I've heard good things. They're supposed to be opening one in downtown New York City, but I don't know if that's going to happen anymore. The Universal AMC is also excellent. It's weird. I think the Universal AMC and the AMC at Disney Springs, you get your own food, like you're in a kitchen, and you just go around and take it off the shelves. I find that crazy. I'm like, how do I know nobody touched this? Because I'm a New Yorker, and I worry about stuff like that. 
All right, so that's the first story of the day. Let's see what happens. All right, so maybe iPickle buy it. I'm seeing a lot of you say stuff about iPick. That's great. All right, story number two. Boop. All right, so Mark Hamill got a movie today. Uh, hey, Charlie Vare. And that's pretty awesome. So uh, Mark Hamill got a movie today. He's going to co-star in this film. And it's with a guy named Bert Kreischer. Now, I've ever, never heard of Bert Kreischer. One of you responded to my tweet saying, how have you never heard of Bert Kreischer? And they included his YouTube handle, and he apparently has like 700, over 700,000 followers. So the guy is like one of those, it's weird. The world is so big that there are these huge people that like some people, like a lot of people have never heard of. But he's a big deal. So his nickname is The Machine, and they're going to tell his, uh, they're going to tell the sequel, the sequel to his very true life story, which is a part of his act. Legendary's going to do this. Oh, he's a Netflix comedian. Oh, that makes sense. So that's him there. He likes to tell his jokes with his shirt off. So he tells the story, and it has over 85 million views total online. And I was like, what the heck? I better watch this story. So sure enough, I clicked over to watch it. That's why sometimes the stream is late, because it's a 13-minute story. So it's about how when he was a, it went to college in Florida, I won't ruin the whole thing, but he fell in with the Russian mob and he did, did some crazy stuff. And in fact, first of all, I thought the story was quite good. I was like, this is a very funny story. And then I looked in the comments and I saw that it has been verified by other people who went to college with him and were on the trip. So I was like, what? So I thought that was interesting. So... Legendary is like, you know what? Let's make a movie about this. And they decided to talk about what happens years later so that uh, Burt Kreischer can play himself, where he and his father, played by Mark Hamill, get, you know, the Russian mob comes for them years later. They're like, ah, oh, you know, I guess they're now they're upset with him or something. So I think that's, I think that's, that's pretty funny. Now, it's being pitched as the hangover meets midnight run. But I'll tell you what it really is. And they'll never admit this because they don't want to, be, to have the comparison. But it's dead on. It's the male version of Snatched. It's the exact same movie. I can't believe it. Amy uh, Schumer teamed up with Goldie Hawn, another iconic actor who is older but can't get any work at the moment. Sorry, Mark Hamill. Um, Mark Hamill is very talented. He can get a lot of work, voiceover work. But he doesn't get a lot of movie work. So it's like a very good comparison. And in this movie, Goldie Hawn and Amy Schumer were in South America also running from criminals. So I was like, whoa, that's the exact same movie, just a different country and, uh, you know, men instead of uh, women. So I thought that was really, really interesting. So I don't know. I got to tell you, I think Mark Hamill will be very good in this role. Uh, and I think it's a good opportunity for him. They're already making funny videos that they're posting on their social media. Uh, Mark Hamill's pretty funny. I mean, let's just see. I mean, it's going to be like, like a really funny, silly movie. It's going to be dirt cheap to make, like so inexpensive. And I have to tell you, I would green light this movie. I mean, I feel like it's just easy money, quite frankly. And maybe it'll go to a streaming service. Maybe it won't go to theaters. But I feel people will watch it. I mean, heck, if I can sell it to... Netflix, because his comedy special does so well there, this thing would just be a dream come true on Netflix, quite frankly. I think agree with Mika. It could be either really good or really bad. But, you know, I'm, I'm interested in giving it a whirl. And if I, if I were you, I, if you haven't seen it, I would watch that story about him in college, and you too will be like, I think there might be something here. All right, so that's the second story of the day. All right, so the third story of the day, hold on. The third story of the day, boop, is that Rami Youssef might get a movie. So I was very happy about this. Yay, Rami Youssef. I think the rest of this project, I don't know about it. But I'm very excited for Rami Youssef. Rami Youssef shocked everybody when he went... Oh, I forgot to do the boom baby. Boom baby! Rami Youssef shocked everybody when he won the Golden Globe, not last year, but the year before, for Best Actor in a uh, Comedy Series. Everybody was like, what? And everyone's like, yeah, you should be watching your show. So I think it was only a matter of time before he got a movie, and this is the one that it looks like he might be doing. So this is another movie from Yorgos Lanthimos. Now, he did The Favorite. But The Favorite, I think that might have been mostly Tony McNamara. I think that all the good stuff in The Favorite came from Tony McNamara, who went on to do The Great on Hulu, which is a phenomenal show. If you haven't seen The Great, fix that right away. It's got, um, oh, what's that guy's name? 
Nicholas Holt, he's got to work more. Nicholas Holt and Al Fanning, and it's just phenomenal. Such a good show. Uh, but the favorite, uh, to, uh, Yorgos Lanthimos, his other movie is very, uh, uh, it's The Lobster, which was like a really crazy movie that was really out there. So I don't really know if I trust Yorgos Lanthimos from a creative perspective. But he's reteaming with Emma Stone. That's why her picture is there. Uh, I'm very happy for Emma Stone. You know, a lot of directors want to work with um, her multiple times. So that's wonderful. Now, what's this movie about? It's called Poor Things. And Emma Stone will play, uh, it's a Victorian tale. And Emma Stone plays Belle pa Baxter, a woman brought to life by an eccentric but brilliant scientist. And I'm like, okay, that means it's Bridgerton meets weird science. And I must say, that's a pretty darn good pitch as well. Bridgerton is like ridiculously successful. Oh yeah, that's the thing that I was, oh darn it, I forgot to cover it. So they renewed Bridgerton for not only, episode, for, not only for season two, but today for season three and four. And I think they did that to make sure that people, maybe actors, would be signed on for more seasons after they lost their star. He was like, oh, bye. I'm already a star. I don't need you anymore. Is it Bride of Frankenstein? Maybe a little Bride of Frankenstein, but Bride of Frankenstein was made specifically to be the mate of someone. I'm not quite sure what the context is here. And also, Willem Dafoe, as Alfonso Amaya just literally wrote, Willem Dafoe is also in talks to join. So I think that sounds... Not, I mean, my only problem is Yorgos Lanthimos who I have, I, I just have a taste issue with. You know, I think, you know, I just worry about what he'll deliver. Uh, but let's see how it looks. I think that, I mean, Rami Youssef, Emma Stone, and Willem Dafoe, you got to check that out. All right, so let's see here. Those are the three stories of the day. It's 7.51. You may ask me anything you'd like until 8.01. And then we shall do the, um, the shout outs. Elliot says, I still haven't seen Bridgerton. You know, I fast forwarded through Bridgerton and I was shocked at how risque that was. I was like, it was like when they did those jokes about HBO Max, like with HBO, remember that, that funny sketch someone made when they're like, it's not porn, it's HBO. That was Bridgerton. I was like, whoa, whoa. Any moment I thought they would cut away. Um, but they did not. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you like my glasses, Kevin. That's very sweet of you. Denny says, do you identify with Rogue from the X-Men? That's such an interesting question. I think every, every woman has always at one point in their life identified with Rogue, with, with Rogue from X-Men. That's why she's such a popular character. Sion says, do you think Venom 2 will be any good? I do, because I really have a lot of faith in uh, Andy Serkis. I've enjoyed every movie that he's directed. Keith says, I have finally watched Invincible, as you recommended this weekend, and I got to ask, who is your favorite character on the show? All right, I'll tell you a little something about Invincible. I made the mistake of reading the comic. I loved it so much that I bought the comic. I bought all 15 years worth of comics, and I read them in about two weeks. Not only was it like, I was like, I just couldn't stop reading it, but it kind of took over my life. But also, now I know all the stuff that's going to happen on the show, and the show's going a little too slow for me. So also, I thought this last episode this week was very good, but it kind of was out of context of the story. So my basic, basically the point of the story, uh, story that I'm telling you is don't read the comic. Don't do it. If the show gets canceled, then you can read the comic to see what happens. But don't ruin it for you. Don't ruin it for yourself. Marvelous JAC93 says, Hi, Grace. Will you see the new season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? It looks very dramatic. No, I refuse to watch it, although I'm very happy that Sutton is a full-time housewife, and she looks like she's doing a great job. But I'm so upset with Lisa Rinna and uh, Erica, <clears throat> Erica Girardi. Uh, I don't even care if she's getting divorced and is probably lying about it. I just can't. I'm just, I just not, I'm not going to reward that behavior. I thought they were too mean to Denise Richards. I don't like Kyle, and then she put her sister, Kathy Hilton, on it. I don't want anything. I'm just, I'm not watching it. I'm not doing it. 
Kyle, don't read it. Don't read the Invincible comic. Watch the show. Mika, Mortal Kombat, uh, they're not, I checked. They're not giving screeners out in advance, even though it's playing in other countries. So uh, they're going to give it out, but it'll be closer to the release of the film. I'm going to ask them about it later this week. Cray Cray Bro Bro, that's a great name. I'm not sure when the Shang-Chi trailer is coming. As I recently discussed, I'd heard it this month, but it might be next month, maybe. So we'll see. Because I think now that it's been pushed back, they might move it a little bit. We'll see. Uh, Portis 2 says, Grace Conjuring 3 Watch Along. Um, I'm not sure. When does that come out again? Did I put that on my list? I'm making a video. Let me see here. Do, do, do. I had it on here. When is The Conjuring again? I gotta look that up. Hey, Mark A. I'm not sure. I gotta see what movies are coming out around that time. Okay, I gotta, I can't do too many watch longs. June 4th? Why is that not on here? Ah, damn it. I gotta fix this. Okay. Barbie Minaj says, what are your upcoming reviews? Well, I'm gonna do Shadow and Bone for Netflix. I'm going to do Mortal Kombat. I'm going to review the Justice Society animated movie. Without Remorse, uh, the Mitchells versus the Machines. That's some stuff that's coming up. It's a little slow right now, and I think it'll pick up a little bit in May, but June will be when things get crazy again with uh, Loki and Black Widow. Ah, oh, Mark, I'm so glad you finally able, were able to join. Brett Crandall, I think the Green Lantern HBO show is probably having some problems with all this Jeff Johns drama. They were supposed to be casting. They've been casting for a while now. Uh, we'll see what happens with it. Marvelous says, Grace, I'm watching Real Housewives just for Garcelle and the new housewife, but I agree they did Denise dirty last season, especially Lisa Rinna. By the way, the new housewife's husband is uh, a really famous animation director. He not only did Mr. Peabody and Sherman, which I interviewed him for, but he directed The Lion King. Rob Minkoff, I think, right? And he's on the show. I just think that's so crazy. He's this really nice animation director, and he's sitting this table of craziness for a dinner. And I'm like, what did you get yourself into? Eli says, what's your go-to movie theater snack? Just started working the local theater. I had to ask. Congratulations on your new endeavor. I'm partial to, I like M&M's, plain M&M's. I like the hot dog. And I also sometimes like nachos. And if I hadn't had dinner... I also like movie theater pizza quite a bit. Uh, but that's what I like to get. I'm not a big fan of popcorn, actually. Um, sometimes I like popcorn. I get a small popcorn, and I put my plain M&Ms in that. But uh, I'm not usually a popcorn person. Storm King says, do you think John Walker will appear in the movies? He's gotten pretty evil, hasn't he? Let's see how the show ends. Hey, Madeline, first billion-dollar movie post-pandemic? Ooh, I don't know. I'm not even sure. It's hard for me to answer that, Madeline, because I don't know when the pandemic's going to end for sure. So I think we have to wait to see. Marwan says, what comics did you pick up this week? Well, I only bought the DC ones because the other ones don't come out just quite yet, but I'll tell you. I got... American Vampire 1976, number seven. That's a great title. Uh, Batman the Detective, I'm trying that new book. And then Joker, number two. That's what I got. But then I'll get more comics tomorrow. I buy Betty and Veronica reprints every week. They're fantastic. Oh, Portis 2, I watched The Sound of Metal last night. I thought it was a really amazing film. I didn't think it was particularly entertaining, but I thought it was really a great movie and very well done. I can't talk about it because there's spoilers, but I felt that that doctor in the end duped him. I don't think she was very responsible. I would sue her. Marcus says, is Chaos Walking worth watching in IMAX? Not now. It's been out for so long, you might as well just watch it at home, to be honest with you. I mean, if you're not going to have the joy of the opening weekend or even the second weekend, I don't think it's worth it. here 
You know, I agree, Alfonso. Paul Rachi was fantastic. He had just like a an ocean of calmness about him. And I was like that. I was like, that guy's awesome. Yeah, Charlie, Chaos Walking came out like two weeks ago, but you have to buy it. Or no, you know, you have to rent it for 48 hours for 20 bucks. Uh, Marwan, um, I gave, I gave, gave you guys some tea yesterday. Let's see here. Cray Cray Bro Bro says, do I like, I'm, that's such a great name. Do I like IMAX or Dolby Cinema better? I like both, to be honest with you. Uh, I have, pro there's the 68th and Broadway one. I haven't been able to go to the IMAX since I saw a mouse run past me and we had to leave on Father's Day. That was bad. And then uh, the Dolby, I like the Dolby that they have there quite a bit, but I haven't been able to be there in a little bit. But I like the Dolby. I've had bad experiences at movie theaters. I went to the Dolby at Garden State Plaza for Beauty and the Beast to see it again, and someone threw cotton candy on my row, and it rained down on our heads. And we were like, what the hell is this? And we realized eventually it was cotton candy. But I have bad movie experiences. Evan Moore says, do you think Dylan O'Brien could make a comeback? I think it's going to be tough for him. I think it's going to be tough for him. But, I mean, you never say never. You have to find the right role, the right movie, and it can be done. Oh, we have one minute left. Eli says, funniest red carpet story. Uh, I can't think of a funny one off the top of my head. But I do, to I've told you before, <clears throat> the two nicest people I've ever interviewed on the red carpet were Colin Farrell, who stopped and did every single interview on that carpet. And it was a long carpet. He even did like the kid interviews with like the child news reporters. And he gave everybody their, their allotted time. And he was just so kind and so nice. It was just really wonderful. So that, and then Jude Law, who also stuck around and did every interview that his publicist told him to do. Uh, and he also gave a lot of attention. He wasn't let himself being rushed in. And he was just really wonderful. So those guys are both, uh, and both in the Fantastic Beasts franchise, interestingly enough. But they're just both two wonderful professionals. Okay, it's 8.01. Time for the shout-outs. All right, so you can uh, just tell me what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're up to, just so I can give you a little shout-out. Just gives me a little something to say, a little bit of interaction. Uh, Green Lantern's Light, I don't have any updates for Black Panther 2. If I don't answer your question and you've asked it a lot, sometimes it means I've seen it and I just don't have an answer for you. Ashley Grady says, hi, Grace. Uh, oh, how, uh, that's a question, Ashley. No, we're past the questions. All right, Pastor Madeline is barbecuing by the pool. Oh, that's so nice. I do, ha I have come to love barbecue. When I was a child, I hated it. Waffles is doing some English homework. Cray Cray Bro Bro is procrastinating from writing essays in Utah. I'd expect no less, Cray Cray Bro Bro. You sound like a lot of fun. Carrie is eating ice cream in Chicago. Oh, that sounds nice, too. What flavor? Val, uh, Josh is just about to watch your Army of the Dead reaction. Oh, that's so nice. I hope, I hope you like it. I had a lot of fun with that one. Steven, I don't know why your thing got blocked. That's a wonderful use of the, of the thread emoji. Uh, Steven's in Ohio sewing a dress. Oh, I hope it turns out. Let's see. What else is going on? Oh, Caesar, your puppy is sick. That's so sweet of you to take care of him or her. Eli says, just finished your Army of the Dead reaction and going to start the breakdown next. Oh, I'm so happy. Uh, that took so long. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Paolo Lazaro is laying in bed in SoCal. Evan Moore says, studying hard at, in, at Pennsylvania School in Erie. I love Pennsylvania. I have family in Pennsylvania. Dancing Dog 60 is eating some pizza in Boston. I'm going to have some pizza for dinner tonight. I bought the pizza cupcakes that I saw in Shark Tank, and they're excellent. I'm going to have pizza cupcakes and some asparagus. Oh, Madeline, you're getting your second vaccine shot tomorrow. That's fantastic. Portis 2 is in London. Oh, my goodness. It is way past your bedtime. It's like 2 a.m. there. No, yeah, like 2 a.m. No, like 1 a.m. Ah, oh, thank you. That's so nice of you. Thank you for staying up with me. Carrie's having some cookie dough. Oh, I love cookie dough. Cookie dough is so good. I love it so much. I eat the raw cookie dough because I use fresh eggs. I don't care what they say. I'm eating it. It's delicious. Raw cookie dough. I always make a little extra cookie dough. So I can eat some raw cookie dough. But you shouldn't eat raw cookie dough. I refuse to accept responsibility for you. Let's see here. Zig Dan is working on miniatures for my sci-fi short film. Oh, that sounds like a delightful way to spend quarantine. Richard Curtis says, I had a nap and woke up at midnight. Glad the live stream was late today. Yeah, I, I, I planned it all along, Richard. Charlie's also in London. Jennifer Escalano is enjoying a chopped beef baked potato. Oh, that sounds delicious. 
ES says, I'm eating and rewatching Star Wars before fasting starts. Oh, get it, get it all in. Roy says, I'm, I appreciate that I caught your stream today in Westchester. I'm glad you did too. Nicholas Aguilar says, I'm excited because I'm about to sign up for Film University. Oh, congratulations. That's going to be so much fun. Oh, Keith is having a fried egg sandwich and a bacon and cranberry ginger ale. With Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, what a weird drink. A fried egg sandwich with bacon and a cranberry ginger ale. I've never put bacon on my fried egg sandwich, but I do love fried egg sandwiches. I'm a big fan of those. Sion is in Wales, about to watch Kill Bill Volume 1 for the first time. You're going to have a great time. Uh, Last Millennial, I do love your YouTube name. I think it's fantastic. You sound like a movie. Uh, let's right. Let's see here. Nina is having Cuban food for dinner. And Jiko just had Chinese food. And Charlie is waiting for his first driving lesson. Are you in London? What time is your driving lesson? Let's see here. And Sith Rodriguez is also about to watch my shot by shot for Army of the Dead. Oh, you guys are great. I really hope you enjoy that. I had a lot of fun with it. All right, I must go. I must make my I must go and make my dinner, have, get ready for my evening and stuff like that. But it was so nice talking to all of you. Uh, I stayed late so that I would be able to do the stream. So uh, thank you guys. I'm really glad I was able to catch some of you. All right, have a lovely evening, and I'll see you tomorrow because I promised you three streams, and that means one more tomorrow. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye. -bye -bye. bye.